Ciao, Italian tribe. I am overly excited today because I have the pleasure to be with the one and only Jay Shetty. Hi, Jay. Thank you for being with us. Hey, thank you for having me. So, Jay, just for if you guys don't know him, which I don't, I think you know him, but um, <laughs> well, there may be a language barrier somewhere there. So that's why I'm super excited today because this video is actually going to be available for you guys in Italian very, very soon. So, Jay, you are an award winning host, storyteller, viral content creator. And since launching your video channel in 2016, your viral wisdom videos have garnered over a billion, a billion views and gained over 11 or 12 million um, followers globally. That's insane. That's that's madness. That's pure madness. <laughs> and, the, and the best thing is that that stat went out of date three months, and so now it's two billion. And it's not your fault. I haven't even updated it. Oh wow! It's ha okay. Happens so quickly. And I yeah, was actually yeah, yeah. I'm not good at math, but no, I was it's not actually. Your fault. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually assumed the billion would have increased if because from three million in a couple of months you you passed to eleven. Absolutely. So um, that's that's amazing to eat, to think that uh, personal growth videos, wisdom videos can actually finally go viral instead of just you know, like uh, useless yes. videos that absolutely don't serve any purpose. Yes. But um, I'd love for you to share your story with us just because Italians probably don't know your story and I think it would blow their mind. Okay, sure, absolutely. Uh, I'll try and do a long story short yes. because it, it's a long story. I was born and raised in London and I was just like everyone else. I wasn't conscious, I wasn't awakened, I wasn't interested in wisdom or any of that sort. I was just doing what everyone else did. And then I had this incredible moment in my life at 18 when a monk was invited to speak at my business school. And up till that point, I'd only been listening to CEOs, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes. But I met this monk who, remember, he looks like a monk. He's from India, but I was totally captivated. And I remember it and I think, I was so captivated because he was speaking from the heart and he was speaking about sacrifice and serving other people and using all the skills you have to make a difference in the world. And then I found out that he'd given up jobs at Google and Microsoft to be a monk. And when I heard that, I thought, that's who I want to be when I grow up. So I ended up spending all my summer holidays. Every year I'd be doing internships in investment banking and consulting for half of my summer holidays. So I'd go from bars steakhouses and nice suits. And the rest of my summer holidays, I'd be spending my time actually living as a monk. So I'd actually be wearing robes, meditating, doing philanthropy work, charity work, helping people. And I did that for four years. And then at age 22, I decided I want to be a monk. So I lived as a monk for three years, mostly in India, but we traveled a lot as well in the Europe. And after that, I left being a monk because my teacher felt that I could share what I'd learned. So I came back to London. I ended up having all my friends now worked at big companies and they were stressed and they were going through their own pain and pressure. And they said, Jay, come and talk to our companies. Come and share what you learned as a monk. So I started to go into all these huge corporations and teach mindfulness, well-being, leadership. And I started a coaching practice. And now executives, celebrities, people were coming to me for one-to-one -one coaching. And that was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. But I really wanted this message to reach everyone on the planet for free. I had this desire that we should be able to give the highest wisdom for as accessible as possible. And what I did then was that I saw that social media was rising. It was going to be that thing that made the difference. So I ended up spending two years learning social media and teaching social media at Accenture. And I became the number one person in social media at Accenture out of 400,000 people. And then in 2016, I left Accenture to put my monk and my media hat together. And I started making these videos. And the videos in about three months were picked up by Ariana Huffington and the Huff Post. And then the rest is what everyone's seen. The videos went crazy. And the best thing is that the videos have been growing faster and faster every year and every day, as opposed to it was successful and then it hasn't. So. One thing I just want to say to the Italian audience, for anyone who has been watching my videos, has liked my page, has shared my videos, I'm so grateful. It means so much to me, genuinely. I never imagined this for myself. So I'm very touched and humbled by the love. But that's kind of my story, quick version. Yeah, this is beautiful. And I think what's the most impressive part is that you actually walked the talk and you're still walking the talk, which is not so common um, among uh, teachers, because sometimes you get so caught 
up in the teaching part and it's all here but actually when it comes to putting stuff into practice this is not something we uh, often do um, yeah. and what we often see our teachers doing so this is amazing and I actually have a pretty deep question I want to ask you straight away it. there is a quote that you uh, that I heard you mentioning in one of your videos that really uh, stuck with me I, I think it was a quote by someone which I forgot right now um, but remind me it says I'm not what I think I am yeah. I am not what you think I am I am what I think you think I am you did a great job you did yes, it, in one. it was That's hard awesome. to remember hard, that yeah. actually I wrote it down yeah, yeah. nice so true. Yeah. It's just the perfect description of uh, the way we actually live our lives based on, we are a function, we don't even exist anymore. We are, we exist as a function of other people's perceptions. Yeah. And so my question to you is, um, when we realize this, because most of uh, the people watching this video are for sure are aware of this fact, how can we actually break free from the fear of, of being judged or of, of actually being perceived as not good enough by other people? And this fear eventually keep us, in some cases for most of our lives, from discovering our true purpose, from discovering what we can actually pull off for real. Yeah, it's about, it's about starting with our strengths. The challenge why we feel fearful, why we feel people will judge us, why we don't feel confidence, is because we don't know what our strengths are. And the funny thing is everyone has a strength. Everyone has a strength. Whoever you are, I was the shyest kid in school. I was the shyest person, I'm still pretty shy. If you see me at the party tonight, I'll be that guy around the corner. I, I, it's, it's just who I am. But I found a strength in knowing that I could find complex messages and make them simple. And so I've geared my whole life around that. And the point is that if you can stretch your life and create a life and mold a life around your strengths, then you won't worry about others. The problem is we try and think we like something or it's a hobby or we're testing something. So the first thing I say to people is figure out what you're interested in and then go and invest and become an expert in it. Don't be average at a lot of stuff be good, really good at a few things. When you do that, you naturally feel self-esteem, you naturally feel confidence, you naturally feel fearless, and you don't feel judged as much. So really big piece of advice, start with your strengths, start with your skills, and don't just, people say follow your passion, that's not true, invest in your passion. Following your passion is not good enough. You can keep following it, and you won't be good at it, and no one will care but you need to deeply. So I spend so much time every day trying to understand how to make better videos. I spend every day trying to become a better messenger. I spend every day meditating for two hours a day so that I can bring real wisdom to people. It's, it's a life's work and investment. It's not just following your passion, it's investing in it. And it's fine to just choose a path and eventually realizing that maybe it wasn't the right one? Totally. Or are we really wasting time? No, absolutely, and you're not wasting time because, so for example, if you just look at my life's journey, so many people said to me, wouldn't it have been cooler if you never became a monk and you just did video? And I was like, well, you've missed the point. <laughs> like, I'm only able to do video. So, and then a lot of people said to me, do you think you wasted two years at Accenture? It was a corporate company. Why would you want to work at a corporate company? I'm like, I learned so much at Accenture. So the problem is because we don't choose to learn from our experiences, we don't value them. So if you feel you're taking a big pivot or you're going down a new path, ask yourself, what have I learned that I'm gonna take with me? Because every experience is meaningful. Even if you started hating your job today or you hate what you do, I guarantee you it's taught you something that's gonna be impactful for the future. And it's okay to change. It's okay to outgrow something where you don't feel you're growing. It's okay. I feel this is so important to remember because sometimes we just get stuck and we can't yes. go right, we can't go left, we don't go straight, we just stay paralyzed for the simple fear of choosing. Because, but then we waste time anyway, so yeah. what's the point, right? Exactly. And, and we feel stuck because of the picture life has painted to us. People tell us that by this age you should have done this, yeah. by this age you should be doing this, by this age you should be married, you should have a job. If you're living your life by someone else's time and pattern, then you're always going to feel like you're behind. And that's why it's so important to recognize that you always have a choice, you can always make a shift. And the reason why we don't shift is because we don't want to give up how comfortable our life is. And you have to realize that if you really want to transform your life, you have to take a pay cut sometimes. You have to shift and live in a smaller space sometimes. You have to make sacrifice to grow in other areas of your life. I've been in places where I didn't have a holiday for years because I was building something. And then you can have a holiday. And that's okay. 
And then people say, well, no, I want a holiday every year. That's okay too, but then know what you're missing out on. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Anything that you choose means you miss out on something else. You can't have it all. You can have it all, just not all at the same time. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Jay, sometimes I feel that we get so competitive about finding our purpose, our mission. And I have to be honest, I've been feeling quite jealous of people who are born, seem to be born with that firing passion. I mean, that, that passion that becomes an obsession and they wake up in the morning and they just want to do that for the rest of their lives. What if we don't have that? I, 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 I watched the video of yours, I watched many videos of yours, but um, there was one video where you said that everything happens according to our time and our clock. Does this mean that we're never really going to be too late? You're never too late. The point is to go at your own time, but to move in the right direction. I think too many people are focused on a destination and we've heard it and it's cliche, but I want to break it down. So everyone hears that life is not a destination, it's a journey. Let's really talk about that. Living the life of your dreams is waking up doing what you love every day. It's not an end. It's not a result. I'm happy because I do what I love every day. I'm not happy because it has to get me anywhere. And so when you see people living their passion, it's because they've spent a lot of time on self-awareness and they've spent a lot of time doing the internal work. So anyone you see out there who's living their passion, living their purpose, they've spent a ton of time. So anyone can reach that. That's not selective to them. That's not just for them. The reason, the point is it takes a lot of work. The point is it takes effort. The point is it takes time. And the main thing it takes is intelligence of surrounding yourself by the right people and using the tools that are out there. So I'm going to recommend a few practical tools. There's something for, called the Gallup Strength Finder. I highly recommend it. I said earlier, know your strengths. If you do the Gallup Strength Finder, it will give you your list of strengths in an order from number one to number 34. When I saw that list for me, it was incredible. Second thing, the Myers-Briggs test, a great test of figuring out what your personality type is. Those two things will give you a bit more assurance and confidence. So you may think, oh, I'm good at this. That will show you whether you're good at it. And then you have to act on it. And I think where people get stuck is that they don't know and then they don't act. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people know, but they don't act on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. The first thing is knowing your strengths and the second thing is acting on them. So a lot of people get stuck. Knowing and living are not the same thing. So once you know it through doing these tools, through trying a lot out, like people are scared of experimenting. When I think I like something, I book a course on it. I speak to someone who already does it and I try and research. And if you research quicker, you'll find your passion quicker. So people just think there. I think that speaking is my passion. I think it. But it's like, have you gone on a speaking course? Have you got feedback? Have you spoken to people who are speakers and asked them, what does it feel like to do that every day? If you've not done that research, then you're not, you're not going to be able to live your passion. So I think sometimes we just sit there for too long. We need to get more active and make a move and start doing something. And that doing will help you learn, grow and feel all the confidence you need. And also find our why and yeah. our purpose. Yeah, and purpose is a lot bigger. Purpose is when you use your passion for others. Mm. So first find your passion then use it to serve others, that's when it becomes a purpose. How about the other two crucial pillars that you mentioned for success, attention and action? Yeah. How do we combine them with passion? Absolutely. So I have a very strong belief that if you don't focus on anything, it can never become anything. So it was Bruce Lee said, I'm not scared of the man who's practiced 10,000 moves one time each. I'm scared of the man who's practiced one move 10,000 times. And, and I love that because that's the point, that impact. If, if someone Bruce Lee was fighting had practiced one kick 10,000 times, that kick would be powerful. So attention is about once you test an experiment, when you see some momentum and you think, okay, this is working, you've got to go all in on it. So I love making videos. People seem to respond to that. So I'm making more videos. That's what it means. Give your attention. It's not that people like my videos, so now I'm giving my attention to like, I don't know, like now I'm giving my attention to writing a blog. That doesn't make any sense because people are already liking something, do more of it. And then action is that. That's exactly it. Then now I know where I have to give my attention. Now let me act on it. Let me now go all in on one area. And whether you speak to Tim Ferriss, whether you speak to Gary Vaynerchuk, all of them will tell you exactly the same thing, that the most successful people in the world go all in on what their skill is. Lovely. Would you ever go back to your previous life? As a monk? Yes. So I spend around 
15 to 30 days a month in India living with monks again, every year. I still do it and it's the best thing I do. It's, it's incredible being around people who have no agenda. When have you ever, and I'm asking the audience this too, when have you ever been around anyone who doesn't want something from you? Oh my God. It's like monks don't need your money. They don't want your fame. They don't care. So when I'm with them, I learn so much and I get reminded of what true spirituality is. I get reminded of what true consciousness is and it makes you realize where you're at and that you've got a long way to go. It's very humbling. So when you say, do I, I go back every, every year. Yeah, so you still do uh, it. Still you do found it. the perfect balance. Yeah, and I meditate every day as well. So I've kept it there. Thank you, Jay. It Thank was you. lovely having Thank with you us. So much. And I would love for you to say Arrivederci Tribu if you don't mind. What was the second part of that? <laughs> it's, it's goodbye tribe. So and say, Arrivederci is goodbye. Arrivederci, yeah. And Tribu is tribe. Tribu, okay. Arrivederci Tribu. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Thank awesome. you. Great. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>